back again. For a, we had Lois here only a week or so ago. Welcome back, Lois. And again, well, you're fam very familiar with the process. Um, uh, we've got your written submission. Looking forward to hearing from you. Uh, and we've got 10 minutes. Thank you and welcome all to the Garden City, or what is left of it, especially in the centre. To me, this bill is too much like its predecessor, Sarah. Though it purports to facilitate the changeover of control to the city in 2021, in my way of thinking, it doesn't go far enough. For this is no longer a time of crisis, but one of renewal with repairs going on, new buildings being constructed. Our people are feeling stronger and new potential leaders need the chance to rise and the experience to succeed. To me, 2015-16 is the time for democracy to be restored and to a much greater extent than this bill proposes. Now is the time for arrangements to be handed over to the people of Greater Christchurch. After all, it's we who live here. It is we who must enjoy or suffer the outcome of this bill. But as far as I can see, the final decision making will be made by ministers of the Crown who may have never lived in Christchurch, who will probably never live in Christchurch. And if they do live here, will certainly have conflicting interests. I understand the ministers of the environment, of land information and transport will be able to override council plans, regional land transport plans and local policies, etc. They may even, and I quote, suspend, amend or revoke a planning document, including all or part of documents of the Resource Management Act. It seems red zone land may be disposed of, access restricted to certain areas and buildings, while temporary buildings may be erected and work undertaken on public and private land through the chief executives of the relevant government departments. To me, these are emergency powers, no longer applicable now. Re the Crown Company to be set up to oversee the so-called anchor projects like the Convention Centre and the Great Sports Stadium. Little seems to be known by the public about them, except that they will probably be delayed and will put financial strain on the city. Even Treasury doubts their viability. And from what I can gauge, the public don't want a convention center right in the heart of the city, a place where foreign, foreigners confer for a few days and which may lie in darkness unused on many evenings, making our city center a dead center. I submit that the citizens of Christchurch should be consulted about these centers and that the city council should plan for them or otherwise as it sees fit. It is my view that this crown company should be scrapped, saving money and possible resentment. I note also that this bill requires its board to engage with communities while working in cooperation with the city council. But how will such engagement avail with final decisions being made by ministers and with a board of seven mem members, three appointed by the government, three by the city council, and a chairman appointed by the government in consultation with Natahu. But I contend the council representatives on this board should have a vote on who chairs meetings and that the chair should not be appointed. I fear also for the red zone the land cast is unsuitable for building on. As a girl, I used to live in part of the red zone next to a park and across the road from the Avon River. 
There was a farm on the other side with cows quietly grazing. It was a picture postcard, idyllic. This land has meaning for me and many others who share an interest in its future, as shown by the fact that in 2012, more than 18,000 people, I understand, had signed the Avon Otakaro Networks 2012 petition, requesting that this area be turned into a reserve and river park. But will this land be sold without public input, seeing that such power is placed by this bill in the hands of the Chief Executive of Land Information New Zealand? Consultation in the bill is constantly urged with communities, with the councils in Greater Christchurch, and with parties like Natahu. I hope this bill will allow for public hearings on significant programs and also surveys of the public, such as the Canterbury Rugby Union plans, re a new, state, new rugby stadium for the city. Cities are people, not buildings, according to Professor Nick Tyler, Chadwick Professor of Civil Engineering at London University College and renowned researcher into the ways people inter interact with their immediate environments. He has found that if people's ideas are adopted, they will make them work. They may even help pay for them. And it also contributes to their well-being and health. So down goes your health budget. But what incentive is there for people to put forward their ideas even? when they know they can be struck out by one person. Indeed, what a triumph it would be for both government and citizens of Greater Christchurch if roles were reversed and final decisions were placed in the hands of the council while government representatives agreed to take on consultative role. This would be a win-win situation for all. Ministerial advice Backing and support is certainly needed, but for future peace and harmony, we also need the desires of most of our citizens to be met. But should such an idea seem too left field, I submit that the new re re regime be required to hold public meetings on all plans so that every interested party, for there are many, can see where we stand and know exactly how decisions are made. And should ministers of the Crown continue to have the final say, then relevant appeals to the Environment Court, Environment Court should be allowed. To me, a more collaborative and open approach is required. The regeneration of the city and surroundings needs to be done at a pace that present finances allow without putting the city under dire financial strain. What will happen when most of us can't pay our rates because of conditions foisted on us? How will this help the government's coffers? Think of the loss of GST. This bill calls into question the control of Greater Christchurch, the rights of our citizens, and the interests of Natahu, etc. To me, it needs to line up with the Bill of Rights and give the peoples who are intimately involved a much greater say. Thank you, Lars. Um, now, members, are there any questions? It's very clear. Yeah, it's very clear, as, as was your previous submission. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you for taking time to be with us again. We, we certainly appreciate you making the effort. Thank for a second you. time in such a short period of time. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Um, I'd now like